I feel a bit set up about the surprise thing because I feel like some of you are expecting a better surprise. So there's going to be an Easter egg for you to collect on the way out. I'm kidding. There's no Easter egg. Sorry. <laughs> but God's going to touch you and meet with you. That's even better than the Easter egg. <laughs> We're going to trust him for that. So I want to speak today. We've got just a little bit of time. If you promise to stay awake, I'll promise to be quick. Um, I got tagged for the last afternoon session. <laughs> um, so I want to speak about understanding the times. Um, I, I feel like it's, it's so imperative that we as a people understand the times that we're in because we get to shape the future, but also that we understand the grace that's on us to understand the times, the gift that it is to understand the times. So I want to start with this verse in 1 Chronicles 12. So you don't have to turn there, but a little bit about the scene. I'm just going to dive right in because we've got about 30 minutes, so I'm going to dive right in. But thank you. So if you, if you can picture what's happening in 1 Chronicles 12, there's um, a bit of a change of kingdoms happening. There's a transition from Saul's, thank you, that space is nice. Um, there's a transition from Saul's kingdom to David's kingdom. David's about to be made king, or he's about to become king. In Daniel, in the book of Daniel, it talks a lot about the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdom of our God. So it's not a new concept to us. It's an amazing concept. It's a concept that's been coming. We know the kingdom of our God has come since Jesus Christ came, since he died, he rose again. The kingdom has come. It's a, he said, behold, the kingdom has come. He said, Pre uh, preach this message, repent, for the kingdom is here. And we know that the kingdom of God, Daniel said, the kingdom of our God will overtake all the kingdoms of the earth. That's super exciting, right? So in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles, we're seeing a transition of kingdoms of the earth. Um, and it's a picture of what's going on as we're seeing these transitions of kingdoms, the kingdoms of the earth being overtaken by the kingdom of God. So... It's very interesting. So David is about to become king and all these groups of men, they call them mighty men of valor. I just get excited about that title. I don't know, I'm female, but I get excited about that. Mighty men of valor. There's something so powerful when you picture that. Um, but all these mighty men of valor start coming towards David. And in, I think it's verse... Verse 22, it says, For day to day men came to David to help him until there was a great army like an army of God. I mean, that must have been some army, right? Like an army of God. It looked like an army of God that gathered to David, this mighty army. So then from verse 23, it begins to describe these groups of men that gathered to David from different, uh, let's call it continents, but from different regions, different tribes that gathered. So it would say from that region, you, you must actually read it. I mean, it gives you goosebumps how it describes these, these men that gathered. But it would say from that region came these men who were skilled at handling the shield and the spear. And from this region came these men who were single in the pursuit to make David king. You could almost feel that singleness of mind, that pursuit, that passion, that like, it, it, when we were singing that song about that burning passion, I was like, man, you could describe them with that burning passion, that single pursuit. And then it would describe another tribe or another group that comes and it says they were mighty men of valor, skilled with the sword and the spear. I'm like, wow, these heroes, I want to be like that. Go Wonder Woman. <laughs> Put myself in there, we want to be in there too. Mighty men and women of valor, come on. And so then it gets to verse 32. And then it talks about these men 
from Issachar. So interesting. And it says, these men from Issachar who had the understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. How remarkable. 200 chiefs and all their kinsmen under their command. Okay, I'm going to read that again because it is profound. You've heard about the men of Issachar again. This is the context. These men are part of a group that has been described for all record, all of time, all of eternity as part of an army who come together and look like an army of God. They are put in amongst a group being described as the mighty men of valor. And it says there are 200 men who have the understanding of the times, who understand what Israel ought to do. They are 200 chiefs with an entire group of kinsmen at their command. Chief speaks of governance, an understanding of governance, of authority, of leadership, of how it works. So these 200 mighty men, I know this is rough for two o'clock, but you can handle it. We're fine. We're fine. We got this, right? Okay. So 200 mighty men, chiefs gathering, and, and they're full of understanding. This was their thing. They gave themselves to discernment and understanding. They've come to give their strength, and that was their strength. That's what they're adding. I find it so absolutely profound because one of the things God's been saying over and over again in the season, you've probably been hearing it too, is been saying, understand the times. Understand the times. When he said to the disciples, wait, wait before you go for my spirit. He's saying, understand the times. Understand what you need for the season. Understand the measure of the spirit that you need. Understand how you need to be clothed. Understand what you need to wear. Understand what you need to look like. Understand what the season looks like. And understand the power that you will need. And when you get that, you will be an unstoppable force on the earth. I mean, I got excited reading this. I don't know about you, but anyway, it was super exciting for me. So if you're not excited, I'll just be excited for all of us. So that's fine. Okay, Luke. So then we skip ahead, right? That's, that's Old Testament. Cool. I don't know who this crazy group is. And what she's excited about, sons of Issachar, Old Testament. Great. Well, here's New Testament, Luke. Here's Jesus talking to a crowd. Um, Luke chapter 12, verse 54. So he's speaking to a multitude. I mean, that in itself is a sign and a wonder, right? Jesus on the side of the mountain speaking to this multitude without a mic and everybody can hear him. I mean, last week we were doing this ministry session and the, the mic wasn't even working properly. I'm like, Jesus, how did you do it without a mic? Can you just help us here? Um, and he said to the crowds in verse 54, he said, When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say at once, a shower is coming. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and so it happens. You know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? I find that so interesting because this is amazingly kind Jesus, the same Jesus who has compassion on the crowds, a compassion that I marvel at <laughs> a, com- a compassion that moves him to give beyond anything we can understand about giving, like when you've got nothing left to give. He's moved by these crowds. He's moved to give everything he has. And here's Jesus speaking to them with a rebuke, actually, saying, you can understand, you can read the weather. You can look at the sky and you can look at the weather patterns. You can tell us when it's going to rain. You can tell us when it's going to be hot. But you cannot understand the times. 
How can it be? You know, when I look at that, I'm saying, gosh, that's amazing, actually. That's actually marvelous because here's Jesus saying to them, I expect more. I expect you to understand the times. He's expecting these people to know what times they're in, to have a grid for it, and to be able to be on the, on the offense, not the defense for those times. And then we skip ahead. One more, one more key scripture for us. Romans. I'd like you to turn there. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake up from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then, let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Okay, let me read it in the Passion. I also really love the Passion. Um, So it says in the Passion, to live like this is all the more urgent for time is running out and, and you know it is a strategic hour in human history. It is time for us to wake up for our full salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Night's darkness is dissolving away as a new day of destiny dawns. So we must once and for all strip away what is done in the shadows of darkness, removing it like filthy clothes. And once and for all, we clothe ourselves with the radiance of light as our weapon. How stunning is that? We must live honorably, surrounded by the light of this new day. I'll skip down. Verse 14. Instead, fully immerse yourselves into the Lord Jesus the anointed one, and don't waste even a moment's thought on your former identity to awaken its selfish desires. So I love this, I love this translation. There's so much in there, but um, for the sake of time, I'll just highlight a few things. So the emphasis on the time to wake up, a new day of destiny dawning, clothe yourself with the radiance of light as a weapon. I love that description. I think I've watched too many superhero movies. I blame it on some of these friends of mine. I won't mention names who've influenced me. But (laughs) you know that moment in a superhero movie, a good one? When they have this moment of identity and they figure out who they are, somehow in the superhero movies, the light bursts out from them. They also get a change of armor somehow in that moment, but this light seems to burst out from them, and they radiate, and it's like this power. So when I read that verse, and it talks about um, the radiance of light as your weapon, I'm like, yeah, that's your identity, man, coming out of you, shining out of you. Um, And then it says, surrounded by the light of this new day. How stunning is that? Fully immerse yourself in the Lord. It's all so beautiful, and we've got to to really chew on that scripture and draw uh, draw out of it. So... So taking these three verses and this emphasis on this, the kingdom, the kingdom is here, the kingdom's at hand, um, and, and what God is saying about this, this understanding of the times that he wants us to walk in. Um, and, and I want to build on that. Um, Sorry, there's like five thoughts going through my head at the same time, trying to figure out which one to track with. So, so right now we are in a very exciting season. It's like we've come into the season where it's like all play. God has given the all play card to everybody and everybody gets to be involved and it's like the windows of heaven 
are wide open. I mean, we know the veil is torn. We know the portals are open, but it's like, it's super easy to see. It's super easy to hear. My nephew, uh, that's, that giant that I was sitting next to is my nephew, by the way. He's got all the tall genes in the family. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we sacrificed for him. <laughs> He's now my bodyguard. <laughs> um, he, was, he was reminding me of, this, of the saying. He says, when the tide comes in, all the boats rise. And I love that. And it feels like that. It's, man, the tide's coming in. <laughs> And everybody can have it. It's like all plays, like no missing out. There's no point for competition in the body because everybody, everybody gets to drink. All the boats are rising. This is our time as the body. Everybody can see. It's not about, oh, what are you seeing? It's like, come on, we get to all see. We get to all hear. We get to all dream. We get to all experience. Let's just dive in together. Um, and so I've had these crazy encounters recently. I've become one of those crazy people, but it's good. It's good. It's working out really good for me, so I'm sticking with it. Um, <laughs> but part of these encounters have been these messages that have come um, from angels for the body of Christ. I mean, there's just no easy way to say it, so I'll just throw it out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, good company. And we know that angelic messages is part of the ways God speaks, right? It's all through the Bible. I'm not going to go through all of that theology now, <laughs> nor am I going to go through all of what the angels said. But um, um, part of what they said is access is granted. Access is granted, and it's the time of acceleration. I mean, all he had to say to me was access is granted, and I'm like, I, I am so there. I am so there. I mean, we have known that access is granted. Access is was granted when Jesus died and rose again. That's when access was granted. But sometimes progressive revelation comes to us. And if it comes today, then we take it today. If today is when we hear it and we get to step in, well, this is our moment. We step in now. Um, and it was like a moment like that. I was like, yes, I, I, I know it was always granted, but something's clicking now and I'm taking it now. Um, and, and that's what God is saying. He says there's a, there's a, there's a, the access was always granted, but somehow the veils have been, uh, the awareness of the veils being removed, there's a fresh grace for it. And the awareness of the access that's being granted, there's a fresh grace for it. And the body's standing up stronger than ever before. And there's a strength coming like we've never known. There's a strength and a vision and a clarity and a purpose. And it's awakening the body. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing this lion roar coming through the body. And we've spoken about it. We've said it again and again. That was great. We've prophesied it, but it's here. It's here and it's happening. And it's happening through ordinary people. And we're a part of that. Um, so I shared these angel words on a lot of platforms. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm not going to go into detail on it. It's on my website, which is www.wellstraining.com. Co. If you want to read the blog on it or hear more about it, I've tried to get it out as much as I can because I really believe it's not for me, it's for the body. And if we hear it, it stirs up faith um, and, we in, and we access more. Um, but a lot of what they said was exactly what these scriptures are saying, strategic hour, awaken, access, run. <laughs> Go, go with what's on your life. Go with it. Um, and understand the times. Walk with the spirit of understanding and revelation. Walk with the spirit of wisdom. Um, I also had a dream in this time where I felt God was saying that, okay, so in the dream I saw a lot of people WhatsApping and emailing and asking for prayer 
So I believe in prayer. Prayer is really good. The whole Bible is full about prayer and asking for prayer. And so that's really good. But in the dream, I felt God say, in the season, it's not enough to ask for prayer. You have to build infrastructure. Otherwise, we're going to, otherwise the season will wear you out. But if you build your infrastructure, you'll be able to stand in the season. So part of the infrastructure is strengthening yourself in the Lord, your devotions, your prayer, but, but learning to stand and withstand. And I think as we do that as the body of Christ, we begin to gain this momentum and this energy. We're no longer on the defensive, on the weak side, on the help me, on the... We're, we're, we're a force to be reckoned with. We're the mighty men of valor. We're adding strength. We're adding vision. We're adding, we're adding, we're adding, we're adding. We look like the army of God. I want to look like the army of God. Um, yeah. So, one of the things that they also said was that alignment is coming and uh, has been coming. So alignment with heaven and earth, a synchronizing of time. Um, and I need to wrap up soon, right? Yeah. Um, so synchronizing of time. And that means people's alignment with their purpose and destiny as well. And so I've been seeing just alignment with resources, with energy, um, uh, tapping into more than we've had access for. And you know, even those kinds of prayers we used to pray about, um, God give me resources, instead of just praying those prayers, we're tapping into the resources. Access is granted. It's like just swiping that bank card and making the withdrawal. It's like access is granted. It's, it's, it's so cool as to what is possible in the season. He's changing the whole framework for the body of Christ and for the believer. And I'm just loving what I'm seeing. In Colossians 4.1, it says, now arise into the fullness of your union with the Lord. I love that verse because it's the season of arise and shine. And then Colossians 4.1, passion says, now arise into your union, into the fullness of your union in the Lord. So it's arising and shining in that union. It's in that place of abiding. Apart from him, we can't bear fruit. But in that place of abiding, in that place of union, we can do all these things and more. Um, one of the things he's also doing is breaking down the, the false divides. Uh, false divides like um, just... Um, divides between, um, you know, the racial divides, the, the church divides, the, all the things we've been wanting to see healed, even sacred secular divides, um, what we're calling holy and unholy, just seeing all of that come apart. The kingdom is just coming everywhere. Um, I had, about two weeks ago, this friend of mine, Tabi, um, Dr. Grayling, he works at, he's a doctor at Christian Barnard Hospital. He, he messaged about two weeks ago saying he had this patient who had been brought in because she was in liver failure. 32 years old, a young Muslim lady, married, um, brought in very critical. And when she was brought in, they already knew that her organs were in failure. By the second morning, she was in such severe distress that her, her organs were shutting down. She was technically dying. I don't know what's the medical term for that. Dying. And, and they put her on the ventilator. And he said the only way she could survive is if they got a liver donor within a very short space of time, at least 24 hours. They could stretch it out maybe a little more. But within 24 hours, and it has to be a very particular kind of liver. So within a specific age bracket, within a specific body weight bracket, all of that. And, but in South Africa and 
all of that huge impossibility, but, but miracle. He felt to pray for a miracle. So he went to her bedside and he felt God say, decree life. So he went and he decreed life. And we're all adding our faith for a miracle liver. She gets a miracle liver within 24 hours. They do the transplant. He stands there decreeing life. They do the transplant. First miracle that it happens. It all happens. He's like he's never in his medical career seen that happen, that they got it and the exact type and all of that. He's like, you don't understand how impossible it is. We got it. But her entire body is dying. So we don't know if she'll survive it, even though we got it. And it's a different blood type. So her body will now reject the liver. Um, and it has to overcome that as well. So it's very touch and go. Well, he sends me a photo yesterday of her sitting in a hospital bed eating her breakfast. I mean, this guy's life, as you can imagine, is radically impacted to see miracles in his hospital rooms every day. He's just trusting the Lord to decree. This is the first radical miracle I think he's seen there. Um, the kingdom is coming everywhere. My nephew, Keegan, was telling me about an extraordinary, he's in, uh, him and his friend Kyle, Kyle uh, are in um, logistics, a great young businessman, and he was telling me about this extraordinary contract that landed in, um, on his table this last week, something that shouldn't actually have landed in their lap, but God joined the dots and made it happen supernaturally. It supernaturally aligned and came to them and worked out. I mean, these are things only God can do. And it came. The kingdom is coming everywhere. Um, I am an attorney and a conveyancer. And when I became a conveyancer, God said to me, it cannot be a job to you. It has to be Isaiah 61 to you. Isaiah 61 speaks about the repairing of ruined cities, the restoration of dreams, the rebuilding of broken things and old things and destroyed things. He says it cannot be just a job. It has to be that. And I said, okay. And I passed those crazy exams. <laughs> but um, the kingdom, he wants to bring the kingdom. There has to be no divide. It has to be as holy on this here now as it is tomorrow behind that desk doing that job. As holy as it is with your kids, as holy as it is to be an aunt. It was one of the greatest privileges to see my, to, um, to baptize my nephew and my nieces and, and all of them. But to, to do all of these facets in life, the kingdom has to come in all of these domains and he's doing it. Um, I'm going to end with this. So I felt like God was saying, as he's doing this, as he's releasing so much grace, we've all been through really rough, really rough two and a half years, three years. But there is grace. The winds of grace are not just a whisper. They are upon us. The the the. The shifts are here, and he says he doesn't want us living in the shadow of yesterday when, when there's a grace for today. He says he doesn't want us walking in the shadow of yesterday or in the last season when the new day of destiny is dawning and daybreak has come already. These are not, so I'm going to read a few things that he's, I felt him to decree specifically for us today. And you can take it if you want. These are not times of missing the target or feeling like you've, you're not finding your purpose. These are times of alignment, divine alignment. I declare that over us. These are times of alignment. You will not miss the target again. You will not miss the target. We will not. These are not times of hope deferred, but these are times of hope resurrected. Of hope resurrected. 
These are times when the desires of your heart will be fulfilled and it will be a tree of life. These are times of the tree of life springing up from the ground and bringing hope again. Not barren ground. That's in Proverbs 13, 12. These are not times of depression or fear or anxiety or restlessness. I feel like God wants to break the back of that thing once and for all. These are not times of depression or fear. When I heard that thing about the interest rate going up and all these things, I heard God say to me, to us, will you let fear rule? These are not times of fear. These are not times of depression. These are not times of anxiousness or restlessness. But these are times of a steady heart and security in the Lord because the grace and the peace comes from Him who is, who was, and who is to come. That's how Revelation 1 describes Him. He says He is the God who is, who was, and who is to come. And that's how he wants us to know him in this time. And if we will choose to know him as that, we will be so secure, so fortified. We will be men and women of valor who will decree the times. We will not just understand the times. We will decree the times. And we will say to those who are weak and who are faltering, these are not those times. These are the times that we will overcome. These are the times to stand. These are the times to stand. These are the times to see. These are the times to hear. These are not the times of confusion and mystery and darkness and seeing dimly. These are the times to see and to hear. I declare over the body of Christ, these are the times to see and to hear. The scripture says, blessed are your eyes, privileged are your eyes because they see. And blessed are your ears because they are open to hear. They are open to hear these things. The, the, those who have gone before us wish they could see what we get to see in these days and hear what we get to hear. So Father, we thank you that these are good times. These are good times. We stand and decree. Can you stand with me? We stand and decree. These are good times to be living in. These are resurrection times. These are hope times. These are times that we will awaken. We will awaken as mighty men and women of valor. Thank you that in Isaiah 11, you said that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. The spirit of understanding, the spirit of wisdom. We ask for the spirit of understanding and the spirit of wisdom to be upon us. The spirit of might. Thank you for your spirit that's on us. Thank you, Father, for eyes that see. Privileged are we that we have eyes that see and ears that hear. Father, right now, break every bit of hopelessness, every bit of heaviness, every bit of yesterday's dullness and last season's despair. We will not take it into tomorrow. We will not take it into tomorrow. Thank you. It's a new day. We remember that your word is true, that your miracles are yes and amen, that your word is true. We say yes to the miracles. And Father, we will not put on some kind of lukewarm, pretend faith. We want the real faith, the raw faith, the lion faith. We stir that up within us, God, a holy fire, a real fire, a radical fire. And I pray, Father, for a fresh baptism right now in your Holy Spirit fire and a deep refreshing and a deep awakening on every level, Papa. Thank you, Jesus. Woo.